You begin life as an egg, but not in a nest, not in the soil, not in safety. You begin inside the living body of an ant. Your mother, a speck of a fly, barely larger than a fruit fly, hovers over a trail of workers. To humans, she looks fragile, harmless, forgettable, but to ants, she is a shadow of death. She darts through the air, finds her target, and strikes. In a fraction of a second, she drives her ovipositor, a needle-like weapon, through the ant's armor. She stabs, injects, and is gone. The ant keeps walking. It doesn't realize that its murderer has just been planted inside it. That is your cradle. A living, breathing prison. You hatch. You are a larva, soft, pale, blind, and you are starving. Your only food? Your host. So you begin to feed. At first, you sip cautiously, draining hemolymph, the insect's version of blood. You avoid vital organs you cannot kill too quickly. If your host dies now, you die with it. So you live in balance, just enough feeding to grow, but not enough to destroy. The ant continues its life. It marches, it forages, it cleans. From the outside, nothing looks wrong. But inside, you are growing, you are moving, you are working your way upward, toward the head. And this is where the nightmare truly begins. You crawl into the skull, you chew through tissue, dissolving nerves, glands, muscles. You hollow the head from within. You feed on the very thing that makes the ant an ant, its brain. From the ant's perspective, reality unravels. Its coordination falters. Its sense of direction collapses. It loses the pheromone trail. It stops communicating. It staggers, drifts, wanders. Sometimes, its sisters detect the problem. They may drag it outside the nest, exiling it before the infection spreads. Ants are ruthless. They sacrifice the individual for the colony. Your host is abandoned, left to wander in confusion. That confusion is your doing. You are eating its brain. You are hijacking its nervous system. You are erasing itself. And then when you are ready, you unleash your final cruelty. You release enzymes that dissolve the thin membrane connecting the head to the body. Slowly, grotesquely, the head loosens at the neck. The ant's body twitches, its limbs spasm, and then the head falls off. Decapitation. The body collapses, the head rolls free, and inside that severed skull, you remain. You use the head as your coffin. You pupate within, sealed inside the husk of the victim you hollowed out. And when you are ready, you emerge, not as a larva, but as an adult fly, you crawl out of the skull, dry your wings, and take to the air. Your first act of freedom is to leave the face of the creature you murdered. This is your life. This is your curse. But let's stretch the lens. Let's go deeper. Because it doesn't just suck for the ant. It sucks for you. You are fragile. Your adult life lasts days, maybe a week. You must find a mate almost immediately, or your line ends with you. Males swarm. Females dart above ant trails. Every strike is a gamble, because ants fight back. Workers rear up, snapping their mandibles. They spray formic acid into the air, trying to blind or burn you. If they catch you, they rip you apart. Ants are small, but they are an army. They know what you are. They know what you do and they will kill you if they can. So your entire existence is a razor's edge. You are born inside a body. You must grow without being discovered. You must hollow a skull without dying. You must emerge, mate, and inject again before your own fragile body burns out. You have no freedom, no luxury, no peace, only urgency. And yet, your terror scales far beyond one ant. Forward flies, the ant decapitators, don't just kill individuals. They terrorize colonies. Entire lines of workers freeze when you hover over. Thousands of ants stop moving, paralyzed by the threat of an aerial strike. Imagine it, 
a superorganism, million strong, brought to a standstill by a single speck of a fly. You don't need to kill them all. You just need to be there. You are psychological warfare incarnate. And here's where the story gets stranger. Humans have noticed. In South America, where fire ants evolved, you are part of the balance. But when fire ants invaded the United States, spreading uncontrollably, humans searched for weapons. And they found you. Scientists imported ant-decapitating flies, releasing them into the wild as biological control agents. They weaponized you. They unleashed your horror in the name of pest management. You are no longer just a parasite. You are a tool of war. But that doesn't make your life less cursed. It makes it worse. Because you are nothing without your cycle. You don't live for yourself. You live to invade, to hollow, to behead. You are born in violence, raised in secrecy, freed through mutilation, and destroyed by time. Your legacy is skulls. Your inheritance is silence. And it gets darker. Because you are not unique, you are part of an entire pantheon of parasites that hijack and destroy. You are akin to the horsehair worm, which drives crickets to drown themselves so it can crawl from their corpses. You are akin to the emerald cockroach wasp that stabs roaches in the brain, turning them into zombies it drags into burrows. You are akin to the lancet liver fluke that crawls into the brains of ants and forces them to climb grass tips until grazing animals eat them alive. You are one chapter in a book of nightmares written by evolution. And all of you are proof of the same truth. Nature is not kind. Nature is not merciful. Nature does not care about fairness. Nature creates monsters. But still, it sucks to be you. Because even as a monster, you are fragile, short-lived, disposable. You don't get to roam freely. You don't get to explore. You don't get joy, love, or peace. You get a handful of days. Enough time to mate, to stab, to inject, to repeat. Then your body collapses, wings brittle, eyes dimming, mission incomplete. You die as insignificantly as you were born. So yes, it sucks to be born as an ant decapitating fly because your life is horror at every stage. You begin inside a host, you grow by eating it alive, you finish by making its head fall off. You emerge into a world that hunts you. You live only long enough to repeat the cycle and then you vanish. And the next time you see a line of ants marching across the ground, think about this. Some of them may already carry a secret inside their skull, a hidden passenger, a larva hollowing them out, a parasite that will dissolve their neck, drop their head, and crawl free from the corpse. That is not science fiction. That is not a horror story. That is real. That is nature.